need to remind me all right so before doing that yes, i was thinking why you're not recording because i'm going to forget these steps so i start writing down you have told me all right so when you get Sorry. jira i'm gonna again one more time show you guys you have to go to jira you have to click free trial version of jira it will give you this page and jira software once you do next it will ask you for email id you put down your email id once you put down your email id it will send you a code put that code and you will be able to log in once you're logging in it will ask you what kind of or put down your project name simply put down your application name which you are going to select once you save it further it will take you to the next screen which will say what kind of boards you are going to create Kanban board or scrum board you click on scrum board once you click on scrum board You'll be able to create a board and you can see that in your projects I have created Amazon and once I click on Amazon This is my board This board is blank right now to do in progress done. It is blank. So let's first create backlog So you click on backlog which is on your left panel once you click on backlog this is also empty backlog as your product backlog. These are the user stories wish list you are going to create. Here it is says epic. Your project has no epic, so this is epic panel. I'm um, considering them as story. You can click on create issue. Once you click on create issue or this create button, it will open up a ticket. And now you can write down your user stories or function requirement one by one as an account holder of Amazon I would like to log in issue type this is a user story we are not going to create epic or task or bug bugs will be created once you go into testing phase for each ticket if there is any issue during testing you will create a bug and link that user story ticket with this bug now this is the place where you can put down your whole user story specification document you can simply paste it you can also do attachments you can attach mockups you can attach screen designs you can also put comments this is assignment section it is going to be automatically assigned people can self assign themselves here right now i am the only one in this project so i can assign it to myself so assignee is imran rafiq labels mean anything which shows the other team members or anyone else who's viewing your project which project is this i'm talking about so let's suppose amazon i'll just simply put am and i click ok okay uh, i click web services any labels i want to add i can add here these labels are going to show the relationship to your project just small keyword now sprint we don't have any sprint currently so it is not going to do any sprint but eventually once you have sprint one created it will give you option that if you want to add it so you can create story point estimate right now we don't have story point estimate i'm just putting three points considering it's a small reporter is imran rafiq attachment you can attach your user stories here linked issues any blogs any duplicates anything we are not working on it right now issues begin typing issues we don't have any issue right now and i will simply do create once i click create this will show me my first story here now i'm gonna add another story in my backlog and i'm gonna say buy product user story da, 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 create this will open up the next one and see the first story have Three story points other I'm I haven't added any story points but later on you can go in each ticket and also add so one by one you need to keep creating sell products you do create another ticket checkout function you do create so this is how one by one you will be able to create your product backlog now all of you um, I have given you assignment write down and functional requirement I would like you to create your project put down that application name as project select scrum dashboard go in the backlog section click on backlog and then start creating by putting by clicking on create button start creating each story 
right now these stories are going to be only one liner eventually you will be uploading this with all the documents you'll be creating throughout this uh, training and we'll be uploading all those mockups workflows uh, use cases test cases everything with this technique um, give me one second guys Okay, now once let's suppose we as BAs have worked on these tickets, we have gathered enough information, we have documented the user stories for each ticket, or at least for initial 5 10 tickets. And now my development team feels that we should move into our sprint as per plan. So I can simply click on this create sprint, and these are all the issues I have. I can simply drag them drop them here you keep on moving these issues into sprints and it will keep on deleting from your existing product backlog that means these are going to be worked okay so this is how this is the basics of jira you will be doing all this you click on this ticket it will open up you can see this ticket on your right panel as well okay if somebody is viewing these tickets, you'll be able to see who's viewing it. Okay. If somebody want to put comment, you can put comment on it. For example, I can say attached user story. And you save Kiran, it. Um, only those. Um, hey, man. Um, anyone can view it or whoever has access to those prints and whoever um, has yeah. access, whoever has access to your project they'll be able to view all these tickets okay. okay and every ticket have a ticket number as well right now you are not you're going to see it because this is not actual project or actual jira jira but this is how whole jira would be exactly same tickets will have okay. their number once you'll i create the able... project and sprint do i give the rollback based access or is it like um it's already in build there or like who has the right to you know kind of restrict the access so one first day when you join the team you will be asking for onboarding and they will be creating your access to jira okay same way they create access to jira for everyone Anyone who have access to Jira for your project, they'll be able to view it. They'll be able to assign tickets to themselves. They'll be able to put comment on it. Uh, they'll be able to play with whatever they want to do. They can do with it. But you will always get an email notification that somebody have worked on your ticket. Somebody have viewed your ticket. Somebody have put comment on your ticket. And from email, once you click on that Jira link, it will take you back toward that ticket and you'll be able to see what's going on in terms of different people working on that ticket or putting comment on that ticket so as a ba when you're creating a sprint you don't have to kind of restrict access to anyone right no Except, you you, uh, you cannot and one more thing you need to understand most of the time your product owner is the one who's going to create these tickets you'll be working on these tickets in terms of putting documents attaching documents attaching use cases to it putting commentary on it and then when you are going to have sprint planning meeting, your product owner is the one who's going to move these tickets into sprints. And before moving it, he'll be taking the timelines, uh, user story points, what effort we need to perform, all those things will be done. And eventually, once these tickets are going to be developed or coded, for your coding team, once coding team, let's suppose one coder have selected first ticket. And he finished it in second day, he'll put a comment, ticket has been completed, going to do testing. The tester will get a notification, tester will also test it, he will also test it, your developer. And then you once get the comment, you can go and you can also check if link has been attached to that ticket. You can open that link, it will show you the login function. You can also put comment on it, that looks fine. Same way every ticket will be developed, tested and completed. And on the dashboard side, you'll be able to see your progress. Okay, right now don't have any dashboards because we haven't created. So let's suppose if I go in Amazon. So you haven't started a sprint. Once we start a sprint, once I say sprint has been started, let's suppose I click on this. Soon I click on start sprint. This is how your 
dashboard would look like. Here you will see to-do list. All the user stories we have selected for sprints, they will be in to-do list. One of your BA, fellow BA or your Scrum Master is going to be responsible once that ticket is completed or somebody have assigned that ticket to themselves. They will drag from here and then they'll drop it into in progress. And once the in progress coding and testing is done, they will drag it from here and they will put it in done. So that means you are also tracking everything using this board, Amazon board. It will show you the progress and tracking of your team. Clear? So for example, I go back yeah. in my dashboards, I go back in my project, or which is the backlog. So this is my sprint. I click on start sprint. I have to put down dates here. So AM sprint one, it is two week, date is already given, sprint goal is whatever you want to put, and you click on start sprint. So what, what is the best practice to label the sprint, Imran? I'm sorry. What is the best practice to label the sprint? Like uh, do you keep it very close to the feature, epic? Uh, the name, like you know, um, what are the best practices to label and name the sprint? So labeling usually will be done by your managers are usually the one who will send you email. Uh, one of my BA was working in Citibank uh, three days ago. He reached me out that Imran, um, my manager emailed me and he said that there are 10 user stories pertaining to one function, one specific uh, component and I would like you to label them with EFD. Okay, they send these commands. They tell you what is it related to. So he said, I don't know what is labels and all that. So I said, I showed you, but it's okay. Uh, go in your tickets, whatever tickets you're going to work. Once you open that ticket on the bottom side, you will see labels. So whatever label he's suggesting you EFD or FED, EFD was that. So you just keep putting it and hitting enter. It will automatically put the label and you can simply save it. And then your manager will also get notification that this ticket has been updated with this new label. This ticket has been updated with this label. This ticket has been updated. So he would know that you worked on it. So he eventually did that. So mostly your labels are going to be decided by your management team, uh, your uh, business team that these are the labels we want to show, or your product owner will let you know. You are you are not you are not going to decide on anything. They will be letting you. So soon I click on start my sprint. Now you see these are three issues which are in to do list. And let's suppose I'm going to work on it. I'll put it in in progress. That means it is showing that somebody is going to work on it. And once this is done, I can put it into done and that should be completed. So within two week time period, all these three tickets that must these tickets must moved into done section. Is it clear guys? Yes, Imran, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take uh, a function with multiple user stories, uh, are we going to write the function first and then the user stories attached to it or just no. list down the user stories? So first, initially, you will create all the tickets. So I remember my first project, we had uh, around uh, 150 or 160 functionalities which we needed to design. Uh, they sent me in an Excel sheet and they said, can you using this Excel sheet create tickets in Jira? Only thing I was doing, I was clicking on create here and I was taking, copying, pasting the user story, one liner user story statement from the Excel sheet. I was putting it here in summary and I was simply doing create, create. So eventually I was able to create 150 user stories. Now further, once you do meetings with business users on those stories, you need to find out how these stories needed to be executed, how these functions are going to be worked. And eventually once your document is ready, you'll be able to attach that document with it. And once you have the sprint planning meeting, your user story will be verified by your product owner. He will go through it. He will check, he or she will check the acceptance criteria if that is what we need. And then they will say, okay, it's fine. And before adding it into sprint, they will ask the, develop, the, the development team, uh, give us my, your estimations, user story points, uh, your effort which you are going to put in this uh, sp specific user story and then once the user story points are assigned he can move these drag and drop these tickets into sprint and you can once let's suppose your sprint activities or tickets what you are going to work you've already taken it he will click on start sprint next day once he click on start sprint 
all these tickets will start showing in your am board or your project board and eventually you will be able to see the progress and status like this as in front of you uh imran uh, may i request you to have a little more clarity just this example like amazon when we look at payment function there will be multiple user stories with respect to payment like payment with credit card debit card or bank account or gift cards etc mm -hmm. so when you write this uh, where are that they are clubbing this together uh, each will be taken i mean you write amazon uh, shop uh, project you will have multiple user stories and payment has four or five hmm. so are they link, will they be linking that payment functionality together or will will it go haphazard in no, that 150 so or 140 good very good question so basically uh, if this kind of a project is there let's suppose your checkout process your payment process uh, there are different other things as well in amazon which have a uh, complicated function so what they will do is they will first create apex so payment would be one apex payment in amazon and then further this apex will be broken down into multiple user stories uh they will link these user stories back to apic ticket apic ticket will have its number and there's a link option where you can put down that uh, apic ticket number so it automatically links so what it will do is it will create multiple user story payment using credit card payment using paypal payment using checking account payment using debit card and payment using amazon gift card or amazon card for each single user story which is coming from your major epic this epic of payment each single user story will have its own acceptance criteria but will will have its own user story specification document attached to it but these ticket must be linked with that epic ticket story number is it clear Yes, Imran. So, what what you are saying is, Epic is created by the uh, product owner. Yes. Not by the BA. No. So, Epic is going to be created by the product owner, and then once they sit and discuss this Epic, how we are going to break it down, then you will be, you know, sitting with uh, the product owner development team, and here you can see that okay, from this Epic, we can break down this Epic into three user stories, and you will create. three user story tickets and you will put down that epic story number as a link within these tickets uh is it also possible that you list the user stories first and then create into a epic no 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 so you have to create epic first and then user story mostly you will see directly they work on user stories if there are not many complicated function but if some application have multiple compl complicated function where they have multiple types of users who have different type of access in that case they will be first creating epic so let's suppose one project can have 10 epics and each epic will be further broken down into two to three user stories so you will have around 40 user stories reason is because one epic which is let's suppose let's take example of amazon the payment function epic cannot be designed cannot be developed coded and tested within two week timeline if they are able to do it they will not break down that epic for example in my barclays project we had a sprint of 4 week it was a hybrid approach so we were able to finish everything in terms of epic we didn't even have to break it down into user stories we were finishing those epics so let's suppose one function payment function with credit card with debit card with bank account with checking account all these four sub functions they were being designed in one sprint which was 4 week long but nobody follows 4 week long anymore uh i won't say nobody follows there's still so many banks which are following it but you will see mostly two week sprint or three week sprint uh, what i'm failing to understand and uh, comprehend in my mind is uh, when uh, till the last exercise you made us to do that was clear to write the functionalities and each functionality will have many user stories hmm. So this point is clear. No, 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 well, no, I'm no, trying no. to one functionality is going to have one user story. When I told you write down mm -hmm. 10 features, I didn't say write down 10 epics. Write down 10 features of one application. Now let's suppose if you have put down one okay. function called payment. Okay. That is an epic which can be further broken down into four user story. Okay. Okay, the assignment was not on epic. Okay, assignment epic was on ten features. Features, right, Jinnah? Sorry. 
Epic could be broken down in features, right? And do you know to the follow-up question that Anil has, right? Even a little bit I'm confused from the last class. What I'm looking is, um, you know, in the last class you said that the when you create a product backlog, right? You mm -hmm. create um say thousands issues and tickets. So what I'm trying to comprehend and what I'm failing to understand is that this is agile, this is like, you know, two weeks, uh, we, we have a sprint planning for each sprint, right? Hmm. And we do the retrospective demo retrospective, and then again, move to another sprint and all. And while we doing sprint one, we are planning for sprint two as well. So what I'm trying to understand is that you're saying the thousand tickets, a thousand issues, are we trying to, you know, um, map all the features and everything right away from the beginning uh, sprint zero and then you know we're coming up with say i gave you a, a sheet right and that there was a for the data mapping there were like multiple epics and features so are you trying to say that we have to go through each and everything come up with the tasks come up with the issues identify the user stories and then put it in the jira and then you know when we are doing the sprint planning we estimate it we put the story points and then we kind of you know uh, move them around and play them around putting into different sprints and all this is how the structure would go or what like i'm, I'm sorry if pretty much moving. what you're saying pretty much what you're saying but uh, there is going to be priority given to all these user stories okay your product owner is going to set and he's going to assign priorities based on your priorities let's suppose you have 100 tickets or 100 user stories it doesn't mean that they will start from ticket one, two, three, four, five, six, and they'll work on it based on the priority given to it. Or your, for example, you're done with the first sprint, and then you move to your users and give them demo. And now they are requesting you, can you design the other component first before the one you are going to give us? So they can request you as well for anything they want to see. So one by one, these tickets, when you're entering these tickets, you are not going to complete every ticket with the user story specification document. Whatever is ready based on priority, they will let you know that you need to work on these tickets and create user story specification documents. So based on the priorities, let's suppose I'm my we are three BAs and we have finished around eight to nine tickets. We'll go for our first sprint planning meeting and we'll add three, four or five tickets in, into our first sprint. Once my development team is going to work on it, I'm going to work on the other user stories, remaining user stories, looking at the priority. As per the guidelines of my product owner, I'm going to work on their user story specification documents. And when that sprint is over, we'll be doing same thing with it. We'll be taking the estimation from the uh, development team and we'll be entering in, into sprints. So you're trying to say that the task will not be um, interpreted as a user story. Every task and issue will not be interpreted as user story. No, 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 right? no, no, no. For example, for example, you finish your. Uh, if you give us an example, say take a login page feature, and if you can give an example, what will be the task, and then what will be the user stories that you will like, if you don't mind. So, for example, within a login, there would be a task called "Remember me" or "Keep me logged in." Okay, or a forgot password option. These are small tasks, but if we talk about a user story, the login workflow as a user, if you want to log in, what is the criteria to log in? The straightforward criteria is the entering email ID, entering your password and clicking, selecting the login function, login button. So that is the main user story. Within that user story, there are small tasks that if somebody want to be logged in for longer time period or somebody want your system to remember your password and email ID, then those are going to be considered as tasks. There would be smaller functionality written for them separately as well. Those will be tasks. And now, for example, let's suppose you are done with three sprints. And when you are doing testing on those sprints, you found some defects, you found some small enhancements which you need to make. You guys are going to have another sprint which will only work on your or maybe you will have one more team, one BA with two developer that will be assigned for the sprints where you are going to only take care of defects. Okay, that doesn't mean that you are only working on development sprint. At the same time, there could be another team working with you who is going to work on the fixes, on issues. So there would be another weekly or two week sprint running parallelly which is going to help that that team is going to help you fix all those issues and resolve all those issues.
So Imran, is that right that you know, uh, uh, for example, the dem the um, the you know document that I shared with you, uh, we will discuss and come up epic features, uh, user stories, task in it, a broad understanding of all the you know kind of features, uh, and then you know they will be asking um, us to create a create those tasks in. Uh, in the Jira and then associate with the sprint depending on. So what I am I'm getting confused is, you know, that I understood that first we create a user story and then we kind of, um, you know, then we create um, um, tasks to uh, achieve those user stories. Right now here it's, it's like opposite to what I understood so far. That you know, no, first you create I'm not, I'm anything opposite to that. Simply, what I told no, you no, no, no. is no, no, you need no. to create a project. Why I'm thinking, yes. thinking that we create the tissues and issues and tasks first and then associate with the user stories. I'm getting confused. I don't know. I'm not creating any task here, I'm only creating user stories here. That's what I'm getting. Backlog is backlog of your user stories. My product is Amazon. I click on the backlog. Okay, my backlog is going to be blank. In the last class, right, you said product backlog, we create issues and tickets. That is yes. what is confusing me. Yes, give me one second. Hold on. Okay. When you say create issue, what do you mean that that word is confusing you? Every ticket is going to be called create issue in Jira. Every single ticket is going to be issue. Okay. Issue doesn't mean issue issue. Like the literal meaning of issue is a problem. Here it does not mean problem. It means task. Whenever you're going to click on create, it is going to show you create issue. Now, what type of issue is that? You have to select yourself. So let's suppose I click on the issue type. Is it a task? Is it a bug? Is it an epic? Or is it a user story? Okay, so user story mean a straightforward function which you're going to develop that is going to be called user story. Task mean if after the development of sprint, something need to be changed. Okay. Or something need to be uh, enhanced or something need to be reworked it is not a bug it is not a defect oh so see okay. that's what i mean you know to what i have i mean to, to to the documents that i have reviewed in my i mean in my organization mm -hmm. they have uh, epic feature user stories and tasks in it like mm -hmm. to remember like for a login I page we would need i i saw that i saw that now talking about that every organization have their own way of working i am no, simply showing you how zira works okay right they will that's explain you everything are. they will explain you the whole process flow how they are going to work here i am only showing you jira that this is the same tool you'll be using in every single organization if you're working on an agile project whenever you're going to click on create create will always show you as a create issue but their issue types are task, bug, epic, and user story. Right now, my our concern is user story. So we click on user story. We click. You even click on task. Okay, let's suppose I, it is a task. Same thing it is going to show you. What is the task? Task is um, wanted to have. This is something they requested. Want to have. Uh, remember me function. And login and you simply click on create okay see it will still show in your backlog either these are user stories either these are functions either these are tasks everything is going to be backlog backlog mean anything you're going to work on so this is going to be called even if you go on let's suppose I'm gonna create another ticket and that ticket is nothing but bug okay login not working properly i click on create 
again it will show in this one backlog itself backlog mean to do list now it is my right. product and owner who find them and then put it in the sprint backlog depending yes. on what you want to attend to first got it exactly. now i understood I was, as i said you know i was understanding because in our uh, this thing organization they create user stories and then assign multiple tasks to it so i was con- i was getting confused with the task and terminology totally and so no, yeah, i'll be working with you on your project i'll be taking care of the That's things all. okay yeah. don't worry about yeah. it okay coming back to anil anil Are you uh, clear on it, yeah. or still some confusion? It's clear. Just I want. Re- I'm trying to relate to the assignment that I have done and uh, submitted to you. Uh, so I'm trying to get clarity uh, how I'm putting it there. So if I go back to the online mobile application for Amazon, mm-hmm. that assignment is what I'm trying to bring into this discussion, uh, Imran. Mm-hmm. So what you explained is clear, but I'm trying to make myself clear with respect to that. So if I use a search. Uh, process or search um, workflow, then I've done about five five user uh, stories in that. Hmm. So how am I writing those uh, in this is what I'm trying to ask you your help. Hold on. Okay. So if you see okay. here, mm-hmm. here I'm doing that. I am myself breaking it down. Payment using credit mm-hmm. card, payment using debit card. Sorry, this is I made it as a bug, but let's consider it as user story. Use yourself when somebody tells you, uh, tell me the functionality of your application. You don't need to say, for example, Facebook have one function called post picture. Okay, mm-hmm. it is an app pick. You have to break it down into automatically use yourself are not going to do it. Your product owner is going to sit with you and they are going to decide if we are going to first put it as an app pick or we ourselves are going to break down this app pick and create directly the user stories. I am no one to decide that. That's why I'm telling you, I'm simply showing you here the workflow, how okay. your Jira okay. is going to work. The decision is in the hands of your manager. If he wants you to first put Apex and then break down these Apex into user story, or he directly is telling you that, okay, I'm putting myself all these user stories without Apex. So what he will do is he'll say payment using debit card in Amazon is one function. Payment using credit card in Amazon is one function. Payment using PayPal in Amazon is another function. So it again, I am no one to decide. I'm a business analyst. I'm not the manager. I'm not the product owner. They will let me know what I need to do. Now, in terms of your assignment only, I understand your point. Have you put down Apex or have you put down user stories? Anyway, Apex and user story both mean functionality. Apex mean major functionality. User story mean a single functionality. Apex mean a functionality which have multiple workflows or multiple alternatives to that functionality. So when you are creating your project now, just simply do this. If you're using, let's suppose any payment, you break it down into payment using this, payment using that, or payment using whatever the options are given, and simply put down user stories. Create your product backlog first. Once you are done creating product backlog, then you will it will say create sprint. Click on create sprint. Any stories you have, move them into sprint, and then click on start sprint. Automatically, it will take you toward the dashboard, which have to do list. From there, you can move it into progress or into completely done. Yes, Simran, it's clear now. Okay. All right. So this is guys Jira. Um, all of you, I want you to uh, get Jira and create your project. So go in project, create project, select Scrum project board. Once you click Scrum project board, then click on the product backlog. Your product backlog will be blank. Click on create, put down all your functions, which I told you, 10 functions. You don't need to put non-function requirements here. Simply put down your functionality. Once you put down all these functions, uh, you have to create these tickets. Your tickets are created. Now further, once we move into our further assignments, one by one, you'll be attaching all those documents to each ticket, uh, uh, whatever the the, uh, related ticket is. So this is your Jira, you have seven day access. Today I'm going to show you how to write write down user story specification document. So you can work on it today. 
and then put it by tomorrow or next day and attach those user stories to tickets i'm not going to ask you to write down user stories on all those 10 tickets you can simply pick up three tickets and on those three tickets you can write down user story specification document <clears throat> any question before i move on to user story specification when you say tickets um you mean the 10 functional things that we wrote today uh, yes. From there, so we should exactly. pick up the tickets. Yes, yes. So those same ten. And then and further down, down, explain it in details. Yes, so the one you've sent me through email. Okay. Simply go and click your project, click on create, and add those those all ten tickets one by one into your product backlog. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone have any question? All right. So user story is one liner statement which defines three things role, function. and benefit so this one line that need to be transformed into user story specification document there are different terminologies which you will be hearing once you work in organizations they usually call them user story specs they call them functional specs or user specs okay functional specs or user story specs this is what they are going to generally call it now when you are going to write it down it have a template every organization use the same template uh, you can build it on excel sheet as well you can simply paste it in the description bar of your user story ticket or you can put it on word document and attach that word document to the same ticket for which you are writing the user story so for example the user story we are going to select is transfer of funds internally using chase mobile application so we'll change it first to the template would be like this user story id let's suppose this is our third user story user story name so simple that one line statement you have as an account holder of chase mobile application i would like to transfer funds between my own accounts sorry this is description user story name is simply going to be transfer of funds and this is user story description where i'm writing the whole one line statement so user story id user story name user story description type of user story there are different types you just saw them if it is an epic you can simply write an epic as well if your one epic can be covered in your sprint is it a function this is a function or is it a task like small task within your app user story remember me keep me logged in forgot my password so epic function or a task right now it is a function we are working on a function or in other words user story actor who is the actor chase bank account holder or application 
user whoever the person is he is the one who is going to be the actor and the most important thing is going to be acceptance criteria before that you can also write down outcome which is not always mandatory but just some general uh, templates also use the outcome part outcome part mean the success scenario so success scenario here is the user should be able to transfer funds that is the positive outcome acceptance criteria is the most important thing that is what which is uh, going to define your development team how this function is going to work all right so all of you use chase mobile application or any other bank application and you must have transferred fund to anyone else or yourself so let's suppose if i tell you you guys tell me to do this whole transfer what is the requirement what is the acceptance criteria what is the workflow anyone Um, you, sorry, you just should have an account with Chase Bank yes. and you should be able to log into the mobile application. Okay, user must have mobile application first of all or account with Chase Bank. Then internet must yes. be working. Okay. Without internet, this application should not allow users to even log in or transfer funds or anything. Okay. Number there should be funds in the account exactly so sufficient funds must be available in account anything else comes to your mind before we actually go into the process so anything which is prerequisite you are going to put it on top and then you're gonna follow the process itself so let's suppose this these are all the prerequisites as anil said must have account or the application access internet must be working you guys said sufficient funds must be available now the actual criteria the actual process so what is it the actual process now we are considering that we have already written the login function okay you don't need to please again repeat user should log in log in with password consider this is your third user story login is already done so what is the step so simply user must click on menu option from menu user must select transfer of fund function and once user select TOF, a window or a tab will open up where following infos must be or should be, not must here, should be entered. For example, from account to account whatever account you are selecting internally if you have checking account same account from account to account right now we don't know what for example eg checking to saving eg saving to checking if you can provide all this kind of small details as well well and good if not totally fine you guys can always discuss it when your developers are going to sit and have meeting with you and your product owner is going to review your user story specification document they might also provide input on it that this for example a password login criteria so password must be of these characters one capital numeric non-numeric fields they can also decide i'm not I'm, as i said earlier as well as a ba you are not going to decide on anything everything is going to come to you the whole information is going to come to you keep this thing in mind nobody is going to come and say 
can you find out how to do it yes they can tell you can you help us in doing analysis can you provide us with recommendations but that doesn't mean that they are telling you to come up with something and do write it down no so number eight enter amount number nine i'm going to put user must enter amount and number nine now when you're transferring funds there is a small box where it says you want to put any comment anything which is optional within any function you should use word user can also add comment or note every function is going to have sub function out of those sub function certain sub functions are going to be mandatory you must write down word must anything which is optional you need to use word can so you developer know which one to hard code which one not to hard code do you guys understand this using these words is very important user must user can so anything which is optional you put it down like that and then 10 submit transfer of funds by clicking okay and that's pretty much it now it seems very simple it is very simple it is always going to be very simple as a ba you need to make sure one more thing please use simple english okay why because your target audience is your development team you need to make sure that they understand what you're writing you don't need to confuse anyone by using a very high fi english as simple as possible whenever you're doing ba documentation the first thing they tell you is keep your documents as simple as possible okay so please make sure you guys also do the same now based on this template user story id user story name user story description type of user story who's the actor in it what is the outcome you're expecting and then finally the acceptance criteria that is basically what you need okay that is the most important thing so i want you to pick up three functions which you have given me please do not pick up login apart from login any three functions no login no logout any three functions and i would like you to change them into user story specification document you can put them in every ticket either you can attach them or you can simply put them in the description form within every ticket there's a description form where you can enter text you can paste all your specification documents there as well but before that you must create your account on jira you must add your project on jira you must select scrum con scrum board then you need to click on the backlog section once you click on backlog section you need to click on create function from create function you need to add all those 10 tickets 10 functions first and within those 10 function you can pick up any three functionalities and you need to write down user story specification document which mainly is nothing but the acceptance criteria for that function how that one liner function is going to be executed what is going to be the interaction of user with the system and how the execution will go you need to write it down attach it back to the user story once you go in jira there is a section called people click on that and you can add me imran rafiq uh, as somebody who's going to view it so once you are working on your documents i'll be getting notifications and i can go in those tickets and check if you work properly or not clear or not clear yes Imran, it's clear okay um, now that day when i was covering jira uh, agile i kind of left few concepts behind one thing which i missed um, requirement gathering techniques mainly you will see meeting 
but that is a very common technique which is used by pretty much every single organization and this question pretty much comes in every single interview have you ever conducted a jad session anyone understand what is a jad session i gave you notes yes it's a joint application development session anil can you explain me what is your understanding why we do that and what is the session all about uh, session is basically you're trying you do not have any information about the uh, the application to be developed so you're calling uh, the uh, uh, the application developer and the business users in this common platform mm -hmm. and asking for an idea and taking taking out the notes there's one business application uh, Analyst uh, who will take the notes called a scriber, and uh, at the end of the meeting, you you do the minutes of the meeting and share with everybody, asking if this is correct or not. Very nice. Okay, so it's very thorough. All right. So joint application development session is a session which is one of the requirement gathering technique as well. But this is not only used for requirement gathering. This is also used for problem solving. JAD session cannot be conducted many, uh, um, um, like most of the time, it can be connected maybe once in one project or maybe maximum twice if, let's suppose, one session you've conducted to gather requirements and one session you've conducted if you have a major issue during your testing phase, you want to fix a defect which is not getting fixed on timely manner. So at that point of time, you feel like that you have to bring on board every team member and business stakeholders to discuss the solution. Uh, one major mistake which most consultants make is that let's suppose if an interviewer is asking have you conducted a JAD session they say yeah I've conducted multiple JAD session never say that you're not going to conduct multiple JAD session JAD session is a problem solving workshop it is a workshop which once started it will only end once you have resolution you're not going to conduct it on daily basis it can go up for three four five hours in a day and eventually if you don't have solution resolution you will start it restart it again next day until you have the resolution there are four major parties involved business stakeholders project management office business analysts including the it team your ba it, this is the responsibility of a ba to open up with the agenda or your project management team can also open up the agenda. What is why we have gathered here before you conduct the JAD session, you need to find out if everyone is available. All the key stakeholders, they must be available. Otherwise, you should not be conducting JAD session. So when you send an email, you mention in that email that we are going to conduct a joint application development session and this is the agenda. This is the discussion point. Now, sometime or few, so most of the time even in some cases right now i've seen that instead of doing multiple requirement meetings on daily basis they prefer to conduct one thorough jad session where every stakeholder comes in and they give they pass on all the requirements in one time and further you can have smaller meetings with them to get more clarification but joint application development session can be conducted to gather all the requirement in one shot your business stakeholders are the one who are going to talk who are going to give their opinions who are going to give their requirements suggestion inputs whatever it is there would be a ba who will work as a scriber who will note down every detail whatever has been discussed and at the end of the meeting they will send minutes of meeting to all the attendees what was the discussion point what is the next action item who's responsible to do what and at what timeline what dates IT team is not going to talk. The development team is simply going to observe this session. And this is not just used for requirement gathering. This is used for problem solving as well. And it is a proper workshop. So this is your joint application development session. Uh, one thing I missed was to uh, how to track the performance of your uh, sprint. Okay. So for example, you are running uh, um, a first sprint and you want to make sure that you are on the right time. So there's a process called sprint burn down chart. That is the chart that you will be using to track down your performance. Sprint burn down chart would be like this. Mostly in your, you will have a whiteboard in the corner of your team. That whiteboard you can go on that whiteboard and first day you can dis design this for example this is x axis you have number of days 
and here you have user story points so for example we selected five user stories and when we calculated the total number some user stories had three points some five some seven so let's suppose we found out that we have 21 user story points which we have to cover in this so let's suppose one three five seven eleven thirteen 18 19 21 and you have a two week sprint number of days are automatically how many 14 days starting from 1 3 5 7 9 10 11 and 30 days every day you are going to burn down some stories for example if one of your developer has finished one ticket which is total three points and on your fifth day another one have finished one so day by day you will be able to see how many stories are being covered and because you are having daily meeting with each other you'll be also able to define if you are running on timely manner or not so day by day you'll be able to for example track now what happened is let's suppose one of your developer is stuck on one of the ticket okay and So they taking a lot, lot of time and you're not able to figure out what's going on. So that meeting which you have, daily scrum meeting, you need to figure out what's going on. This board will tell you. There would be some, some time you might see a slack time period that we are crossing that time. We are we might cross this 14 days timeline uh, because we have to give two week. We have given deadlines to our business users or we have been given deadline that we have to support this whole functionality in two weeks. So you'll be able to find out if you're slacking or not on daily basis you need to track that so this is a burn down chart on x-axis you have number of days on y-axis you have story points every day you're burning some story points and this is how you'll be able to track down the performance Imran, is it a burn up chart or burn down chart burn down chart that you just burn down chart it should be it should be reversed right so yeah, yeah, the x-axis the y-axis should be, the y-axis should be having like zero day would be 21 and then uh third day would be you'll have the 21 minus one user task done so it'll be 20 and then so it'll be coming down yes, isn't so it? coming down backwards yes okay but the graph is showing upwards so i was wondering yeah, yeah, my bad burn up or burn down or we can have uh, hours and efforts right and then it would come down this could be called burn up like even if it is going up it it's just giving could an be, idea whether it's used anyway. It could be used yeah. anyway. Uh, number of days are usually on this x axis and y axis. You have story points. Uh, honestly speaking, never designed it, uh, never seen it in all my projects. One only, yeah. BS generally don't do it, it's the product owners. Yeah, they, they should not be a coach, but they put it on whiteboard. I've seen in only one project that he used to come and draw it on the whiteboard and then say that okay, this is where we stand right now. True. Uh, just that I was trying to look at from a graph perspective. Uh, that's all. No, no, that's fine. That's that's very good. Thank you so much for clarification. Okay, then there's another concept called sprint velocity. It tells you speed of your sprint, which is basically dividing your user story points by number of days. So for example, I said you have 21 user story points and you have 13 days or 14 days. When you divide it, you'll be able to find out that we have 1.6 sprint velocity. That means in one day we are finishing 1.6 story points, which will help you coming into next sprint to decide, okay guys, in last sprint we'll be able to finish 1.6 points in one day. So let's keep it to same level. So sprint velocity is calculated at, at the end of each sprint by dividing the total user story points you've taken and completed by number of days you have taken in the sprint and you'll be able to find out sprint velocity. so there's another terminology which is used uh, again these both things are not very practical or practically used reason uh, is very simple and reason is that daily sprint meeting daily stand-up meeting 
you discuss those things on daily basis you make sure the all your team members on right track and if somebody is stuck at something you help each other so it, it kind of kills everything else uh, so the good part is having all these meeting there having a lot of transparency these are simple measurement uh, techniques some companies they use it some companies really don't care about it i've seen only in one project that they create sprint burn down chart uh, velocity we never calculate velocity uh, we simply have to know that okay how many user story points we can take and our first sprint sets up the benchmark which will let us know that okay moving into next sprint how many user story point you can do easily so first sprint you always keep a buffer your manager will keep a buffer for you and eventually once you on speed uh, sprint by sprint you will know how much you can cover in each and every sprint okay uh, tomorrow Imran, i have a question yes may i ask now yes yes please so the uh, first spring is where you take it as a benchmark, either from the previous projects or the product owner's experience or any other team member's experience uh, of the Scrum team. Right? Let's say, yeah, develop. let's say if the front sprint has become uh, unsuccessful, and uh, then how are how is the project going through? Uh, that is a very worst case scenario you're talking about. Uh, usually that doesn't happen. These teams are highly qualified and high, highly skilled. When they are hiring these teams, uh, the criteria is: Do you know what is Agile Scrum? Agile Scrum. Have you worked on Agile Scrum? So they basically hire them. Uh, if they are coming from this experience, they will not hire a person who's saying I haven't worked on Agile Scrum, but I'll give it a go. They will not hire him. So this mm -hmm. is a worst case scenario, and that can also happen when this kind of situation happens, where you are stuck at something. Your one of your developers is not able to finish it. Even other developer who's trying to help him, you are not able to finish it. Then you need to highlight this point to the product owner. You have to send him an email stating that we are facing this issue. So is it possible if we can move our meeting from this day to this day? Then he need to talk to the business users. He need to explain them again. This is a chain of command. The whole thing need to go through all these stakeholders. And then if they approve it, then you can simply and usually they will approve it if there's a valid reason. But if there's no valid reason, the reason is that uh, oh my developer he he left the project. Okay, that is not a reason. We can right away get another developer from another team. It's a big office. It's a big company. We can always utilize it. But if there's a reason he's saying we don't know how agile actually work we were not able to cater to the user story points or identify the user story points that is no reason you should not be saying that so development team usually uh, they themselves keep some leeway some margin for themselves in the first sprint keeping in mind that we might miss the deadline so they always keep so first sprint will always have less activities again as i said this is the reason we keep buffer three four five day buffer may be given anything which we can do in 10 days we will take let's suppose okay we can do it in 10 days but we have total 14 days we are still keeping four day buffer but if you want to be over smart and efficient and you think that okay from first print onward we'll be able to figure it out then you must or you might have a problem so that is where okay, your so owner jumps in and he decides based on his own expertise and experience how many use stories should be or how many story points should be taken in first print? And the BA nowhere makes a decision on this, right? It, no, it, it's no, a no, on the development BA. effort, we don't make the decision. Okay, thank you. Thank you, welcome. Okay, um, guys, I have some uh, guests coming over. Uh, uh, my in laws are coming over. Uh, so I have to leave right now. Uh, anyway, we are done with today's session. I had to, uh, Sonam. Can we do it tomorrow, please? And I will bring this, uh, your assignment in the class itself so everyone can provide input as well. Is it fine? Definitely no problem at all. Sure. And two things. One thing is that I'll be sending tomorrow, I'll be giving you a project, small project to start. You guys need to create a business case, write down a business use case document, and then create a process flow document and then write down the functional requirement of that application which i'm going to give it is an actual project which is happening in department of florida uh the correction department of florida uh they've sent us this uh so i'm gonna send i'm gonna share that with you tomorrow so we'll start working on that small project at the end of uh, this ba course you'll be submitting me back you guys can work in groups or you guys can work individual capacity should work in individual capacity initially 
then I have one more project for you, actual project, actual case study uh, from Morgan Stanley, which will finish once we are done with our finance session. So these are two, three new things I've added in my course so that you guys can have hands on practice on the actual projects which are going on. Um, I'll be sending this recording. I'll, I'll be uploading this recording into that folder. Uh, you already have day one, day two notes. Um, so just refer to it. Anything you want to go through, sprint velocity, burn down chart, or whatever we discussed today. Uh, but make sure you create Jira account. You add me in your Jira. Uh, you have to go into people. And from there, you can add me. You have to enter my email ID. And uh, anything else? No, nothing else. Okay, that's it. Enough. Uh, one more assignment I've given you today. So pick up three functions and change them into user story specification document. Attach that document with Jira for each ticket. Also, you can email me if you have written them in Word or Excel. You can separately email me as well. Clear? Yes, Imran. Right. That need to be uploaded on Jira tomorrow or like we have two days? Tomorrow, uh, next day, it's fine. As long as okay. you can send me email. With Sorry, the... I just have class in the evening, 3 to 6. That's why I'm asking. Tomorrow is fine. <laughs> Thank tomorrow you. Tomorrow at the end of the day is fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yes.